Hello, everyone. My name is Vivian Stewart, and I am one of the librarians embedded in your online class. I want to welcome you to our virtual classroom experience, and there are some resources that I would like to share with you during this session. So give me a moment to um, share my desktop with you. Okay, we are now at the InfoNet Library's homepage. And since I'm embedded in your course, I've been seeing the emails concerning an assignment that you're currently working on, where you are supposed to locate, I believe, history resources. You are supposed to create an annotated bibliography based upon those sources. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever thought about using the library as a place to find your resources, but I want to share this video with you to just let you know that there are alternatives other than simply using your textbook or depending on popular search engines. So during this session, I want to show you as many resources as I can, demonstrate how to use them, and then talk a little bit about an annotated bibliography. Now, I am currently on the library's homepage, and the quickest way for you to access our page is to simply go to any of the public websites for Southwest, and in the blue banner across the top, you will see that library is listed. Now, on our homepage, there are a couple of things that I would like to point out to you, and then we'll go directly into working on your assignment. Um, it may be best at this point if you would select the option to view this in full screen mode to make sure that you see everything. I do want you to know, first of all, that we have five locations, and these are photos taken from our campus locations. There are several announcements that you may need to be um, that you may just need to be aware of. The first one is that we are currently closed, but you can contact us through Ask a Librarian. We have started curbside pickup on Tuesdays and Thursdays. This does not include reference books nor textbooks. And then you have the procedure that walks you through how to arrange to check out materials and how to return them. Under instant message us, you'll see we're online, click to chat now. So there is actually a librarian that is available to answer any incoming chat messages. When we are not online, you have the ability to send us an email. As I scroll down, you'll see report a problem. So if you ever experience any type of technical issues, if you simply will report it here, we can take care of that in a timely manner. These are the links that are frequently visited, and we will look at our databases page in just a moment. SOAR can be used to locate books, articles, videos, and much more. And at the very bottom, we have our widgets. Ask a Librarian is usually um, the point of where I'm wrapping up, and this is how you can contact us for additional assistance. We have our own YouTube channel where we have created videos that show you how to use our resources. The 360 virtual tour would allow you to view the interior of our different locations. The library webinars page will provide you with that schedule of online sessions, which is similar to this one. We do have a social media presence on Facebook. And branch hours and info will not only give you operational hours, but also a listing of our staff members. At this point, I am moving to databases. So now, if by chance you've already started on your assignment and you have been dependent on popular search engines like Google, that is fine if, if your instructor has said that you can use those. But I want to show you that you do have some alternatives. And the alternatives you have are our databases. And on our databases page, it will allow you to locate ebooks, multimedia items, journal, and magazine articles. And I will show you how to access each one of these. Now, your Southwest username and password will be required because we are working remotely. If you would ever like to see an alphabetical listing of all of our databases, you can simply visit our A to Z resource page. On our databases page, you'll see that we have some very broad categories listed. They are arranged alphabetically, starting with biographies, and the list goes all the way down to science. Now, I do not have any specifics on your assignment. I'm going by just congestion from what I've read, and I think I have a good idea. So I would like to start off by going to database collection. And this is a 
cross-curriculum type database that, that can be used to, to almost find information on any topic. It may not always be the best topics, the best information that is available, but it's enough to get you started on an assignment. So what you will see is that we have a listing of databases and then we have the category of multimedia. These will either be subscription titles where you can watch videos from collections or these are videos that we have actually created and placed on our YouTube channel also. ProQuest Central and TAIL are very similar. They will provide you with a number of databases in one platform and allow you to search across all of them. So the first place I would like to go is TAIL. So once I click on the title, the next thing I need to do is to log in with my Southwest credentials. And I have come prepared with a couple of topics and we'll just run a couple of searches here just so that you could get a good view of how to use these sources. So as I scroll down at the bottom, these are all of the titles that we are about to search for using TAIL. And I've decided that I want to start off by trying to find information on the Great Depression. Now, as I was typing, what you would notice is that Search Assist is trying to help me find the best source to the best search strategy to start out with. Of course, I could easily perform a keyword search and it may bring up a lot of things on the Great Depression. But what I really want is the one in, is that says the Great Depression 1929 through 1934. So as I select this, I am now waiting to see what type of resources this database will actually give me. Under showing results for, I have 236 general magazine articles. I have 170 academic journals, which are more scholarly type publications where people have done research on the topic. 419 books, 178 newspaper articles, 15 images, two video clips, and one audio. You can always filter through your information if you want to narrow your results down. But by just taking a look at my general magazine articles, I know that everything may not be something that I could use. But I think that the, the results that I have here would be better than me just performing a keyword search for the Great Depression. When we look at our results list, you'll see you have the title, you have your author's name, you have the source that it came from, you're provided with the date, the number of words. It tells me that this is an article, I have my reading level, and then it pulls a couple of sentences from the article, followed by the title of the database that um, this article actually is found in. So as I look down through my results, I think that I would like to look at this particular article. So if I select the title, the next thing I am waiting for is to actually see the article. Now, all of our databases come with a set of tools. So at the very top, if you would like to sign into your Gmail account, you can to save your articles. We can sign into Microsoft using your Southwest credentials. Cite is available, so this is a citation generator that will generate the citations for you so that you will not be accused of plagiarism and you need the citation for your annotated bibliography. Now, I would think that you will be using APA 7th edition and it has actually been done for you, but you would need to make sure that this is done correctly because this is computer generated. So just make sure that you um, Verify that everything is done correctly based upon what your instructor has said to you. We have the ability to translate this into multiple languages. You can increase or decrease your font size. You can listen to this if you want to. This is a shortcut to your Google Drive, shortcut to the Microsoft OneDrive. You have an email option. You could download this to your USB drive. And then you have the printer option. There is also an electronic highlighter. So as we scroll down through this article and we're looking for relevant information, if there was something in this paragraph I like, I could just simply take my mouse and highlight it. 
choose the color of my choice and I can even make myself a, a note to help me remember something. So at the very end, I can just print or download the highlighted portions only. And so this is how you would use the Tennessee Electronic Library. Now, as I'm going through the other resources, I just want you to compare your knowledge of using popular search engines with our databases because your instructors will want you to start providing them with authoritative, credible, and scholarly information. And you may not always get that with popular search engines. Okay. So I am closing this out. Back at my listing of databases, I am now going to electronic books and we're going to look at two resources here. The first one is Credo Reference. This is a collection of reference books. So in this particular collection, let's say that I wanted to find something on um, Pearl Harbor. So what is happening is that it will show me the information on my topic coming from various books. And I have 1,669 results. If I wanted to look at the entire text of this information coming from the Encyclopedia of American Studies, I could. But let me just move down to just show you what we actually have here. So this is my topic. This is the source it came from. It pulls a couple of sentences from it. I can go through and bookmark all of the ones that I like and just look at them all together. It tells me the number of words. I have some images. And with these key concepts, I can easily move to go to something else that's very similar. By simply selecting my topic, it will now display the information coming from this source, full text information, and then I have the tools across the top and citation is one of the tools and you have related searches over to the side. This is Credo Reference. I also have Net Library. This is our largest ebook collection, which has about maybe 269,000. So in this case, let's try to find something on the Vietnam War. Okay, just as before, Search Assist is trying to help me. And let me just accept the first one. I have 766 books. So I am provided with the title. I have the author's name and other publishing information. So at this point, I'm just looking for one that I may like. So I want to actually look at item number three. So by selecting the title, on the next page, I'll have the different tools that I have access to. I have a description of the book. I can view the table of contents if I would like. And in my options under detailed record, I can select PDF full text, which will now load the book up for me. I have the table of contents. I have tools across the top. This is the cover of the book. And in order to navigate through the entire book, I can either use the scroll bar over to the side or I can use my navigational arrows. And if by chance this is not the best book for you, you can just simply select another one. But the entire contents of the books are here in this particular collection. You may also want to use ProQuest eBook Central because it has about 179,000 books in it. Let's go to the category of history. And under history, we have the 1960s in America, which is actually a book that we have in digital format. So during the 1960s, these are the type of things that were very relevant. So if by chance you want to find out about the Agent Orange controversy, you would simply select it. And this is the information that appears in this particular book. Your citations are listed at the bottom where we have MLA 8, APA 7, and Chicago Manual of Style 17. Of course, you would simply copy this information, but you would need to make sure that it is formatted correctly. Now, this is actually cited as though it is a print book because it is in electronic format. This um, citation is not correct. So, you know, you would have to do um, some searching to make sure that you format the um, citation correctly. Your tools are over to the left hand side. 
you have the 2000s in America. Just as before, but this time you actually have the table of contents, which is a hyperlink. Which may allow you to scroll down a little bit better. So if I wanted to talk about the border security. Once I select this, I'm just waiting for my information to display. Full text information is provided for you. Once again, your tools are over to the left hand side. We have the American History Online. When this opens up, what you will find is, is that we are having problems with this particular database. So this is one I cannot show you now. Um, maybe when you actually start on this assignment, we will actually have access to this again, and then I could actually walk you through and show you how to use it. Um, let's go to the Encyclopedia of African American History. And with this particular one, so let's say that I wanted to find information on Jim Crow laws. And we actually have 259 results. So what you will find is that it talks about Jim Crow laws, and these are the different books that I can find information on. Now, I would suggest that you look at the lengths because as you can see, some of these are not very long. It just gives you basic information. So you may want to just scroll through to see which one has the largest amount of words. Like this one has 1,146. So it will provide you with the full text that is coming from this particular source that you have here. Let's see what else will we want to try. If you want to deal with immigration, there's something that deals with issues in U.S. immigration. And we have something entitled U.S. History Gale One File. So in this case, let's try to find something on um, prohibition. Okay, I'm just looking down through my listings here. Now, remember, I just performed a keyword search. So, all of these results may not be the best choices for what I'm actually trying to find. It may be that performing another type of search to make this a little bit simpler. Um, let's, do, let's put an alcohol on here to see if that will help. And now through my listing, I can see alcohol prohibition. And from here, I have eight magazine articles, 44 academic journals, six books, and 27 newspaper articles. So depending on how many sources you are supposed to use, you can use something here, but it may not be the one to give you the best results. You know, so all of our databases can be used to gather something for you, but there are some that are better than others. If what I say, it makes some sense and I hope it does. So let's close this out. I want you to see that we also have the list of recommended websites, maybe some things that you would like to use. And then on the multimedia, um, you'll see that we have a YouTube video that deals with finding primary sources for history. We also have the history of civil rights in America, history turning points, and then we have the history video online. So if you're more of a visual type person, these are videos that you can actually watch. Scrolling down to the category of multimedia, I would like for you to see academic video online premiere. And at this point, I want to see what we can find on World War One. I. 
9,790 videos. So these are actual videos that you can watch from this particular database. And you may want to use some of these as um, resources for your annotated bibliography. We also have the Master Academic Collection, but since we're having problems with the American History Online, there may be a possibility this one is not available also. But let me just check to see. This one is still up very good. So this time, let's try um, Industrial Revolution. So now, as I can see from these six results, that nothing that I'm looking at is anything that I would want to associate with the Industrial Revolution. So this is not a good source to use for this particular topic. Let's see what else we have. We have the Civil Rights Movement. And it says 20 results. So if you find a title that you're interested in, you will simply select the title. This cues the video up for you. You could view the entire transcript. You could watch it in its entirety if you would like. We could even view this in full screen mode. These are the tools that you have access to. You have a description and then these are other tags that will lead you to similar type resources. Okay, now I'm not sure if you have any written assignment that goes along with this, but I would like to quickly share with you the category of grammar. And under recommended websites, I want you to know that in the event that you are using popular search engines, there are tools here that will help you cite those. We have some dictionaries located here, and I want you to see the thesis builder. So after you have completed your research, if you do have to write a paper, this will help you to formulate a thesis statement simply by answering these questions. What is the topic you want to write about? What's your main opinion? <clears throat> Excuse me. What's your main opinion on this topic? What's your strongest argument supporting your opinion? What's a second good argument that supports your opinion? And if this is not a persuasive paper, what is a third good argument supporting your opinion. You would create a title and when you select build a thesis based upon what you have placed here, it will give you a suggested thesis statement. And it is not plagiarism as long as you don't copy and paste something directly from one of those sources and use it as your own. Make an online outline it will help you to organize everything and stay on target when you're actually writing your paper. Before you turn anything in to your instructors, allow Grammarly to proof whatever you have written. In order to use Grammarly, you need to register to have your own account. It asks you for your name. You must use your Southwest email and it asks you for a password. When you select sign up, an email goes to your Southwest email and you have to complete the validation portion and wait for the welcome letter. When you receive your welcome letter, you officially have an account. You can copy and paste whatever you have written into Grammarly. Grammarly will proof it for grammatical errors, spelling errors, and also plagiarism. It will give you um, an explanation on why something was wrong. It will give you um, ways to improve what you have written. It will even allow you to totally dismiss it. Now, if you would rather work with someone one on one, well, then you can always contact someone in the academic support center and set up an online tutoring session. I'm closing this out. I'm going back to the library's homepage. And now let's use SOAR, which it says to locate books, articles, videos, and much more. And our last search will be on um, women's. No, I don't think that's in the right time period. Let me use Jim Crow laws again.
Okay, 120,530 results. This is pulling together all of our print resources, all of our electronic resources. So the first thing I want to show you is where it says refine your search. I am selecting CyberCat, our online catalog, to look for print items. So with item number three, this is actually a print book that is in the Born Bloom Library. And you have the call number to actually find the item on the shelf. Now, re remember, our libraries are currently closed. So I don't know if you would actually have to have this item to evaluate it completely or if we would be able to find everything that you need in order to use this in an annotated bibliography. You just need to check with your instructor concerning that. So let me remove that. And I am selecting full text online. I am selecting under content types, magazine articles, and under publication dates, I'm selecting the last five years. So now my results list is down to 1,475. There's also information coming from the Credo Reference, which is available over to the right hand side. So these are my articles. You have your title. You have the name of the person who wrote it. You have your source. And if I would like to view modern Jim Crow laws, I would just simply select the title. And the full text of this article should display for me, which I have here. And you have the tools as across the top and tools right here. Going back to the library's homepage. To get additional assistance, you may want to use our YouTube channel to try to look at videos that will help you like possibly to research and use an outline or you may want to find um, a video to help you with using the thesis um, builder. So these are videos that we have created that are provided on our particular page for you. And of course, that video that I, I pointed out earlier about locating primary history sources, that is actually on this page also. It is actually right here. Okay, next we have Ask a Librarian. So this is how you can get assistance. If you would like a librarian to work with you for about maybe 15 to 20 minutes gathering your information, simply submit this form and a librarian will reach back out to you. Ref Chatter, the librarian is not online right now, but you can send an email and these are the hours of operation. You can use this number to send us a text message. You could chat with us on our Facebook page. We have staff members who are responding to any voice messages that are left on our telephones. Librarians are embedded in your online class. So if you go to your class list, you'll see Ask a Librarian, so you can ask us questions there. BombGuard is a software that will allow you to remote out, allow us to remote out to your computers. This is our departmental email address. And if you can't think of another way to reach out to us, simply use Report a Problem. Back at the library's homepage, now let me just quickly talk a little bit about an annotated bibliography. If you have never created one before, I suggest that you try to find a um, YouTube video that will um, just walk you through the process. But basically, you are creating a bibliography of all of these sources that your instructor has instructed you, the number of sources your instructor has instructed you to use. OK, they must be listed in an alphabetical order. OK, and she will identify what style it should be done in. The annotation part comes in to where you are actually not just describing this resource to the instructor, but you may be pointing out why you think that this resource is very good for your research. You may want to point out the the best things that you like about it or even point out some of the weaknesses that you have with it. You may want to point out um, some of the things that the, in, the author has actually brought out that makes it a relevant source for you. The instructor will usually let you know how many words should be included in the annotations. So the, the most important thing you need to remember is whatever instructions you have received concerning this annotated bibliography, make sure that you follow them, okay? Because you don't want to lose points because you did not follow instruction. But as I stated, try to find a YouTube video and then um, I think that will answer any questions that you may have. I am about to stop sharing my screen now. 
And that brings me to the end. And I do hope that watching this video will has um will help you if you have not already started. And if you have started, hopefully it will give you some additional ideas. I, I do apologize that we were not able to see the American history online, but I do plan to follow up with the vendor to try to figure out why it was down tonight. But if you would like for us to go over it with you later on, well, please just reach out to us and let us know. Thank you so much, and I do hope that you are successful on your assignment. Have a great day.